Hi everyone, I am really excited today to show you this absolutely gorgeous looking book. Now I was sent this as a gift and I haven't looked through it. I have seen a flip through but a long time ago when, and I popped it on my wish list. I haven't looked at it since. So I'm really excited to have a flip through and look at it and for you to join me. So I'm going to pop my lamp on in a minute. Um, I didn't put it on because it glares on the uh, on this on the cover because the cover is very shiny look that's some that's the window um it has a nice red back and a bit of the front picture there and a little bit of detail there there's a qr code i don't know if they are on every book these days or whether that's just specific to this book but anyway this is by morgan o'brien who's done quite a few different matchstick mouse books Ch chompy fluff monsters chompy chunky i can't remember um and he's done welcome to the village he's done the way home i think it's called and quite a few kids books as well actually but these matchstick mouse ones are just gorgeous so let's let's get stuck in shall we i'll open the first page and then pop my lamp on there we go it'll go a bit more yellowy probably i can try and keep it in the middle we'll zoom in in a minute so however this book belongs to um the sort of copyright page and the title and then we can actually get on and look at the pictures now it's a single sided book so on the back of each page you just get a little piece of wording here which means that you can use lots of different um, pencils to colour or pens or paint or whatever because I just get that lined up because um, it doesn't matter if it goes through the page obviously you're going to want to put some paper behind here to protect it if I use wet media I always use a laminate sheet just in case but it's up to you really um, to protect the next page but it means you can experiment with lots of different things which I think is really fun and I'm sort of looking forward to using things like metallics and things like that in this Christmas book I haven't got a Christmas book so uh, this is going to be lovely um so let's get on so we have got here she is with her warm scarf she's got a bobble on her hat which i think is fabulous and she's skating can you see what she's skating on she's skating using paper clips i think that's a brilliant idea we've got lovely snowy trees so we have to learn to do a bit of snow in this picture um which is fun there are different ways to do snow oh we need to come out a little bit this one here we go so we have a gorgeous little bird and she's having a ride which is lovely and again with the fluffy scarf and a bobble on the hat which I think is brilliant I assume that may continue through the book and some nice trees which you could of course do um, with snow on if you wanted to so that's really cool there we go now we're inside and she is cooking do you see what her cooking pot is? This is like a horse chestnut shell. We have some lovely holly. Is this the front cover? Yeah, it's the front cover. Sorry, it's a bit... Um... And she is actually wearing a Santa hat in this picture look, rather than her own hat, which I think is really cool. And she's still got her friends there watching. So that's rather nice. And these curtains, they're the same in every time we see her house. She's got those sort of unmatching fabric curtains. I think it's great fun. Oh, here she is with lots of gifts. Look, so we've got presents and we've got a stocking and we've got some sort of trees you could do in a sort of wintry style. I think that's really adorable. Lovely picture. <laughs> oh, look at her. Do you think she's just crashed or do you think she's having a snooze? It's a little hard to tell, isn't it? Isn't it? He's lost his ski. Oh dear. <laughs> Ooh, so she's carrying a pine cone. What an interesting picture. You can do lots of texture in that, lots of different browns and things. What a lovely picture to do. Now what we've got here. So we've got a sort of Christmassy style blanket, I'm thinking. Yeah. And then behind her we can see the pine cones and some bits of greenery, which of course you could do like um pine. Um, greens and things like that so that's rather fun that's lovely and we'll look at her so she's got her candy cane and uh, she's leaping we've got a Christmas lights and a sort of Christmas tree it's almost as if she's gonna put it on a tree hmm what fun 
Oh, a snowball fight. I wonder who she's fighting. Because her little friends are here, look. I've got snow again to colour. Colouring snow is interesting. I'm quite looking forward to having a play with that. Oh, we're inside. Now here's our Christmas tree. And she's painting cards. Oh, how sweet. And there's some knitting. That's lovely. Oh, and look at the snow mouse. I think it must be. Look at the whiskers. How sweet. And the hat as well. That's adorable. Really cute. So she's giving a Christmas card to her spider friend. It's really sweet. She's got a sack. Is that a sack of cards or a sack of prezies? We don't know. It's lovely. And a cute scarf. It's night time. Look at the moon. Now what have we got going on here? So she is outside under a blanket with a pot of something. What are these? Berries? Hmm. How sweet. They're like um, a bottom of acorns. But I don't know what's inside. Maybe it's a hot chocolate with lots of cream on. Mm. So we're back inside. We've got our gift wrap. We're wrapping up worm. <laughs> we're wrapping up presents. I'm not sure what, what's that. The tail's going through it. As we've got, oh, it's the sticky tape. Look, we've got sticky tape, of course. She's got it on her ear. I wonder if she's okay. <laughs> <laughs> got the Christmas tree there too. Oh, now we are on the top of a tree and we have got in our hand what looks like a pencil sharpener blade. That's what it looks like to me. I wonder if she's going to chop the top off to make her own Christmas tree. I don't know. I like Worm's hat. It's very cute. Yeah, look. So here's the top of the tree. Now Owl's helping to carry it along. It's really cute got snow again that's really fun and here's the tree being decorated a lovely star this bit bits here's a candy cane look that's lovely it's so cute and the worm's still got his hat on now we've got a nativity look little figures oh that's so cute Isn't that adorable and look it's even a palm tree got a star a stable Little baby. <laughs> it's adorable. Oh, now we're seeing some carols. Having a good old sing song. That's rather cute, isn't it? Worm doesn't need a book. He obviously knows the words. Oh, and now we're cozying at home. Look. There's a lovely cozy autumn picture of it like this, but uh, this one uh, is obviously Christmassy. We've got the tree and prezies. We've got a lovely drink. It's snowing. Pine cone tree, really fun. Ooh, now yeah, that is a big sack. Huge, huge. I wonder what's in there. She must have presents for everybody. Wow, that's quite a big gingerbread man, isn't it? Quite a big one. Well, interestingly, that she's oh, she's taken the the um the she's taken the button off. She's having a nibble. <laughs> oh, it's cute. And she's knitting by the fire. I like colouring fire. That'll be fun. We've got lovely stockings. You can see the Christmas tree again. We've got an open win a window with nothing, so we can choose what to do with that. So that's good fun. Oh, we're baking again. So what have we got going on? We've got a pan and a worm. We've got cabbage, berries. Looks like cheese. I guess she is a mouse. And nuts. Some pieces, a leaf. I'm not sure she eats leaves. I'm not sure this is here. I guess it's whatever you want it to be. But that's lovely fun. Oh, and here she is on her broomstick, and she's obviously delivering some goodies in that basket. It's a rather sweet picture. She's uh, off she goes. Oh look, cookies. So here's somebody's front door. She's going to deliver something and in there as well a little drink presumably or is that is she in her own house I don't know oh <laughs> tossing a pancake that's really sweet I don't think I associate pancakes with Christmas but uh do you see what's that that's one up stuck up on the ceiling look where she's tossed it in the wrong place <laughs> how sweet 
oops oh look owl and there it's a lovely candle and then they're having their christmas cracker that's really lovely oh and little beetle's got one too oh and they're having gifts look lovely prezzies owl's got a hat and scarf on too very cute oh and she's unwrapping something what do you think that is hmm i don't know we've got ball of wool uh, a rocket thing hmm Oh, look at that. It's a cute little toy. That's really, really sweet. So you can get, do whatever colour you like for that one. That's really pretty. Oh, that's the last picture. So I'm going to choose one to colour, I thought. I'm going to pick one that's the least Christmassy, um, which sounds a bit odd for a Christmas book. I actually thought this one would be quite good because although um, they're wearing a hat and scarf, it's not really, really Christmassy. I thought I might have a go with my metallic pencils. But see how far we get. I brought my um, soft touch in as well, just in case we sort of run out of ideas, really, because sometimes it's a little bit limited with the metallics. There's the um, swatch chart. Um, so you can have a quick look while I just get the pencils out of the tin. Ooh, there we go. I do need a, piece of, a couple of pieces of paper to put behind the page. Sorry, I perhaps I should have done this off camera, but never mind. Now what I find with the with the metallics is on their own they okay, but I often like to combine them with other, with each other to make different colours. So we'll see what we can do. I think if we start with the trees. Now we the greens um are quite muted as you can see we have a few olives and a few really bright greens and then the rest are more sort of bluey greens but I think this sort of African jade might be a good color to start with for the trees so that's what I'm going to do if I can find it here it is and I'm going to do all the trees with a layer of this to start with and then we can um, Put a bit of shading on them. I'm not sure, I know I said when we were flipping through that we could do snow on these trees but I'm not sure, I don't think I will. I think I'll just leave them green because we've got the snow in the sky and I will probably leave that just white. Um, I think oh, it could be stars of course although the star we've got the star shapes which are probably stars so I might just leave it so that those those circles are snow and the stars are stars. I don't know if that makes sense, hopefully it does. And so we'll just move around. Put down a fairly heavy-ish layer of this. I'm not very good at staying in the lines or covering it all quite up. So often with the black background you can see much more easily where I go out the lines, but it's what it is. See, that looks like there's snow there. I'm going to colour it over. Now, I want to darken up some of the areas of these trees to make it look like they're shading. But with my metallic pencils, I don't have a darker green than this. And this is only just dark enough for my liking anyway. So we have to be a little bit more inventive. Now, one option which I use a lot is to use the black because that, or a dark grey because they can shade, or you could use a brown. The browns aren't particularly dark though, so I don't think they're gonna work in this instance. So I'm actually gonna grab the black. Um, it is called the Mythos Black. And what I'm gonna do is just put a little bit in the areas where I think it's gonna be a little bit darker. So my desk has decided it wants to groan. I don't know why. <laughs> like that. It's because I'm leaning. No, oh, I don't know what it is. <laughs> Let's just hope it doesn't collapse. Imagine. It'd be quite entertaining. Now I'm going to go back to the green, the African Jade, and go over those dark areas because I don't want them to look like they're just black and also just take that 
darker colour down a little bit and you can see it just adds makes the tree look a bit more layered which is the effect that I'm after so while I'm colouring I just want to say a thank you again to the lovely lady that sent me this book it's a lovely lovely book I'm very excited to have it now I'm trying to think about stars and beaks at the same time um, I think I won't think about beaks yet I think maybe we'll do the stars now because I know what colour the brightest colour yellow whoops, is the Vegas yellow and I'm going to use that on all the stars and the reason I'm doing the stars next, which might seem a bit odd because they're such a small detail, is because I know what colour I want to do them. I want them to stand out really brightly from the sky and this yellow is a brilliant colour for that. And so I need to make sure that everything else I do maybe isn't this colour so that these stand out. So I think if I pop it down now, that helps me to remember that I need to not do this colour for anything else. There we go. So my next um, part is going to be Matchstick Mouse herself. Um, I'm going to do her in some shades of brown. Um, we have, I'm just having a look, um, the Bismuth Crystal I think is probably a good place to start. Um, Finding it, there we go. And I'm going to do um, the um, more furry bits here. What I try and do when I colour her is to make her arms and sides and nose in a darker colour, and then this bit and this bit in a lighter colour. So here's her. Arm. This is quite thick, I'm putting it down. I'm trying to find her other arm amongst all the scarves. Like that, and this bit. Now her ears, I often forget, I need to remember to do those. And think about what colour to do them. I'm going to go around there. A little bit here like that a bit under there there we go now the inside of the ear I tend to not do brown I think that one is the outside I always struggle a little bit which way I'm supposed to be doing it but I've done it like that now and so I want a paler colour for the sort of body and face um, I think the Harvest Gold is quite a good one. It's quite a browny yellow. Now with um, with her, don't be too afraid of making it look a little bit liney because she's furry. I'm going to leave that bit of the nose white. I think that's how it's done there. I rarely do it like that, but uh, actually it might not. It might stand out a bit too much. Not sure. Mm. She's got her eyes shut. She thinks she's frightened. She looks happy. There we go. I think I will do that bit. Now the nose I was thinking either a very dark um, brown or a black. The bismuth crystal is actually the darkest brown but we do have a sort of mahogany but it's a little bit more red. So I think I'm going to do black. Um, so back to the mythos black. I use this a lot. I'm sure it's going to be the first one that runs out because I'm also going to use it a little bit here to create a little bit of shadow from the hat just a little bit there like that um, I might want a little bit under the scarf I'm only going to do it very gently a little bit 
for my bird. There we go, leave that there. Now inside the mouth, I've got the little tongue. I think I might just put down a bit of this black really lightly, not trying to avoid the sort of tooth. And then I want a pink. Um, let's have a look. I'm thinking burgundy rose might be the one to go for. I'm going to just go over the top of that black and on that bit so it looks slightly different black doesn't really make that much difference I think it's fine okay bird I'm thinking blue bird I think that would be fun but I think we could do her or him in a similar way to mouse so where we've got this bit here maybe do this bit lighter and this bit darker so I'm looking at my colors the peacock topaz is the darkest blue so if we use that for the areas I want darker so here and I try and colour in the direction that the lines are drawn because that's obviously the way that um, the feathers are supposed to be falling growing or whatever falling isn't really the right word is it so uh, I try and colour sort of in that direction so I'm going to fade that a bit there and then do a bit of a darker bit under here and then start to fade it a bit out there And then do a darker bit under here, basically just layering up, and then fade it towards the end of each feather. Now I treat my metallic pencils as if they're normal coloured pencils, with regards to how I lay them down and layer them up and mix them together and things, I think it works quite well. like that and we shall add another colour in a minute um where should we go here we'll go we'll do this bit so yeah i try to uh, just treat them as if they were any other pencil and then you can get some different depths of colour and layers and things which is quite nice and then but you also get the shine when you tip it to a light i mean they're not massively shiny so it's quite nice to play with them in other ways as well but I know some people aren't fans of metallic pencils that's fine you could just do this in a normal pencil I'm going to make the tail darker at the top and fade towards the bottom I haven't decided what I'm doing with the tummy yet which is why I've ignored it <laughs> I think I might just do it light so just sort of fading this off really now we want a lighter blue I'm thinking yeah the crystal blue is going to work crystal blue so what I'm going to do is just continue from where I was as I started to fade and just use this one to finish it off really take the colour to the tip quite lightly you can see it's a similar shade just a bit lighter and that's what we are looking for that's what I'm looking for anyway. so you could probably get I mean you could do any two shades of blue really for this um, you might want a more grey blue if you want to try and match, but it doesn't really matter. Of course, your bird could be any colour. I wouldn't do the bird browns if you've done the mouse browns. But if you do want a brown bird, you can do a grey mouse. You know, there are lots of options there. See, here we've got quite, it's looking quite stripy. I'm really tempted to try and eliminate them, but actually they work with the featheriness, because that's a word. <laughs> I've missed out so many stars. All these stars. 
<laughs> Never mind. I shall do them in a minute. It's lucky I just put the pencils aside and then I know what I've used. I do remember actually because I tend to use the same yellow for um, all my brights. Because some of the other yellows are more of an antique goldy type colour, which is great for metallics, but not for what I not for stars. I don't think. But you may think so. Now I'm gonna go really lightly here. I should really keep going with that direction. And if we get these lines, look, it just looks feathery. I'm not sure if I want it quite that um, obvious though. But we'll get this bit side done first and then have a think. I think we'll just over colour that a little bit. Get rid of some of those lines. We don't need to worry about all of them. Now her beak and feet and legs. I'm thinking maybe greys, sort of silvery greys would look quite nice. So I think I will choose some in a minute. There's a few different shades to pick from. Okay. Um, We've got darker and lighter and we've got browner and bluer shades. I think I'm going to go for the platinum because it is a darkish cold silver, if that makes any sense. So here where it's marked darker, I'm going to layer it up a little more and then do a bit less down here. I don't know how much of a difference it will actually look. I think it's okay and a bit here little bit darker than here. There. She's cute, isn't she? It's, I'm surprised because I'd have thought with these feet could easily make her not look that cute, but she does look cute. Quite dark under the beak. There'll be a lot of shadow under there. And this bit is going to be lighter on the top here. So I'm going to sort of fade up to the top a little bit like that. Now I'm going to do the stars that I missed out with the Vegas yellow. And while I think about mouse is hat and scarf. Now the pom pom, I'm quite, it's tempting to leave it white, but it's against the white paper, so we won't do that. Um, we'll we'll um, do it with a colour. We'll do the hat. Um, so we've got blue. I think we need a different colour now. In our, I show you. In our, we've got one orange and some sort of browns, which you can blend with those. And you've got pinks and reds ish, muted reds and purples. And I'm thinking the pinks and purples are going to go better with the blue. Um, I think purple is probably a more Christmassy colour than pink. So that's what I'm going to do. That's, so I'm going to start with the amethyst, which I think is the darkest purple. And do the areas that are darker. Now, I, we, we haven't done our ears or hands, have we? Um, where um, these lines are indicates the shadow. So that's our darkest purple. Look how pretty that is. And then I'm going to start to reduce... Um, how many layers I do and lighten it there and put more layers here I can hear my boys chattering in the background I don't think it this um, I was watching a review with this camera because I wanted to try and see if there are any nifty tips or things that I could learn about using it I haven't learned anything yet but I'm going to do some more of that so I'm just going to go over these darker bits a bit more and sort of fade it more evenly. And um, it said that the microphone on this camera is really rubbish unless you're only less a metre or less away. Now the camera is about a foot from my nose, so it's definitely, or even a bit closer than that. 
so it's fine the the mic but I think what that does mean is it doesn't pick up ambient noise very well which is probably a good thing the person um, who was making the video actually complained and said that um, the mic wasn't fit for purpose for what they were using it for but they were filming themselves and they had the camera fairly far away because they didn't want to have be filming up their own nose <laughs> it's never a good look is it um, so oh, let's do the scarf in this too shall we no I've done a tiny bit I'm not going to do any more I'm going to pick a slightly lighter shade I think I'm going to use the violet sapphire I'm not convinced it's that different but we'll see um, but he was um, he's so he was sitting further away from his phone and uh, it the sound quality was really bad but uh, as far as I can tell mine is good fit for purpose should we say which is good but he said because it's he also is complaining it's advertised as a vlogging camera um, it's a ZV-1 Sony camera and I'm trying to work out what, what's going on here um, and I can see what's going on and um, he said the problem with it is that if you hold it at arm's length um, on the special um, sort of selfie stick type tripod-y thing, handheld tripod that comes with it, um, it's not far enough away. You can't zoom out enough so basically you can't get your whole head in shot so it's not really fit for vlogging. But fortunately for what I do it's absolutely perfect apart from the fact you can't live stream um, now I'm going to use some black to emphasize a few areas on that scarf the mythos black here look I want a little bit of shadow under there now I think up here it was a little tricky to see what was going on but I think here is a the scarf sort of turned over a little bit and here we have the bit that's coming out from the back and I'm going to do the pom-poms in a slightly lighter shade um, let's have a little look um, I think we'll use the Viola see some of these shades are quite close you can see how close those are here's the Viola and we'll do the pom-pom now you can use the scribbly motion because we want it to look fluffy floofy fluffy or floofy like that so if we can see some paper through it actually makes it look more fluffy so I think that's good it's quite an easy technique you can use a white gel pen to do streaks and lines and make it look but I think this just looks more pom pommy now we've got hands and ears um, what I sort of want is a, I was thinking a pinkish colour, but, oh, mm, that might work actually, the Imperial Topaz, it's a slightly peachy, pinky, reddish, brownish colour, <laughs> it's just every colour, blue, purple, black, red, yellow, <laughs> you'll see, <laughs> just keep it quite pale. Uh, there we go. Now I want to do a couple of finishing touches with some Jelly Roll pens. I'm going to use these gel pens and I'm going to use the yellow and the yeah the silver. I use these two the most out of this set. This is the hashtag 551 and I'm going to use it to draw around the edge of each star. I think it will just add a little bit more sparkle to it. And it is a Christmas, whoops, it is a Christmas book after all. It also hides where I've gone out the lines, which is good. Oops. <laughs> but I just add my own layer of mistake instead. <laughs> You could colour the whole star in this, of course, but 
I'm just showing you the difference really between the metallic pen and the metallic pencil and I rather like doing it this way. There we go. And our silver is hashtag 553. You can buy these separately. You can buy them in the set. Ugh, just put my hand down in the wet gold. Well done me. You could leave I know I said I was going to leave these white but I'm not. <laughs> I think they might have stood out more as white which may have been better. But it's like this now. Um I could have outlined them which might have made them look a bit more like the stars, couldn't I? But never mind. Now you could add a bit of this to the tree. I'm not going to. I think I'm just going to leave the trees as they are. Or you could add some white bits. There we go. Um, I'm just checking I've done it all. I think I have. I'm going to just tip it up so you can see the shine. You can see the shine on the pencils actually quite well. There we go. So there is our finished page. That was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed colouring that. But uh, that is a gorgeous book. I'm going to put that away now until Christmas. Um, because as I say, I haven't got a lot of Christmas. I've got Rita Berman's winter book, which does have Christmas pictures in. And this is and this one, and that's it really. So I'm going to put it away for Christmas and have some fun with it. But uh, I shall really look forward to it. And I might just sneak it out every so often because you know what it's like. Christmas colouring is so much fun. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Um, should we put it straight? There we go. Um, I hope that that was okay and you had fun. Um, in the description, there will be links to the names of the pencils that I used and where to buy them, affiliate links um, for the pens, pencils and book. So you can uh, have a look there and grab them if you want to. But for now, thank you so much for watching. I um, hope you have a really lovely day and happy colouring.